Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Saturday. Uh, first of all, hello. Hope you're having a great day. I hope you're enjoying some time with your family. Hope you had a good week. Uh, just hope that you're just awesome today. Uh, and we're going to continue our devotion. Uh, so this week we've been doing a devotion called Chosen. Uh, remind yourself of the gospel and been some really good things come out this week. And man, isn't it true that we need to daily remind ourselves of, of how good God is to us and, and how much he loved us. And uh, if we can just reflect on the gospel for what it is uh, in just the simple fact that it's Jesus loves us so much that he came from heaven to live on this earth, uh, to die on this earth, to be buried, to be raised again after three days, to go back to heaven to prepare a place for us and for us to be reassured that he's coming back. Uh, seems simple, but man, how awesome that is and how powerful those reminders can be when we start to apply those every day. So today uh, we're going to continue our devotion uh, and we're, we're going to be looking today in Romans. Uh, so I'll share my screen here, and I simply titled today's uh, devotional, Jesus Loves Me, and that's the reminder that we want to get across today. That's the reminder that we're going to talk about, and that being that you are a child of God. If you are a believer and you believe in the gospel, you are a child of God. And so I want to just say that Jesus loves you today. Uh, you know, I know that when we read that, Jesus Loves Me, you think about the song. And sometimes uh, just singing that song is enough to be an awesome reminder, too, that Jesus loves me. So let's get into our, our verses here today. We're in Romans chapter 8, and we're going to be looking at verses 14 through 17. I'm just going to pull a little something out of each verse. It won't be long, uh, long-winded today, but Romans eight fourteen says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So. As believers, we are called to follow God. And so this says, for as many as are led. Uh, many times we, you know, we want to try to lead God where we want him to go in our lives. And, and that's just not how it's designed. That's not how it's supposed to work. You know, we often want him to work on our terms and, and we want him to do things on our time frame and not his. And, and as believers, and, you know, we are, we are called uh, his children, and we're often called his sheep. Uh, you know, and many times, uh, even in these devotionals, we've, we've discussed how, uh, what sheep are like, and that they are uh, followers, and that they are designed to follow uh, their shepherd. Uh, and, and in this verse, it references believers as the sons of God. Right, so uh, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you know, you think about um, for those of us who have kids, you know, and and everybody knows that I have three uh, three boys. And you think about your kids, how would it look if if all parents followed their children uh, instead of children following the parents? Right. Well, uh, I would be following my kids to. Uh, the candy store all the time so uh, we would all of our teeth would be rotted out and we would have candy every meal and uh, we wouldn't be very productive we would play uh, video games and watch YouTube all day and um, I wouldn't get any work done so if you think about that that doesn't work right and so it doesn't work when we try to lead God we have to be the ones following God and when we are led by him um, you know we're in we're in the right, in our right place, following God. So the first thing that I want to take away today from that verse is God leads and we follow. God leads and we follow. Good reminder uh, of the proper place uh, in our relationship with God is that we are always following Him, seeking Him, trying to ask Him what it is He wants us to do, not us asking Him, hey, what can you do for me today? Right, so moving on, uh, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And so if we look at, at these, this verse, I'll read one more verse here, and then we'll, we'll pull them together. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are 
the children of God. So uh, if we look at these verses here, um, we get a lot of things from, from God when we decide to become followers of His. Uh, so when we accept Him uh, as our Savior, we do get a lot of, of things from God. We, uh, we get hope. Yes, we do. Uh, love. Yes, we get that. Grace, mercy, all things good. Yes, all the good things in our lives come uh, from God and through that relationship that we have from Him when we become followers. One thing that we do not get uh, when we start a relationship with Him is a spirit of fear. So that's definitely not something that comes from our relationship with God. This says there, the second part of that verse, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, whereby we cry, uh, Abba Father. So adoption just simply means that something is taken in as a part of another group, right? Something that is accepted uh, as a part of something bigger, something that someone has accepted as a part of a family. Uh, think about when a family adopts a child. Uh, you know, you take that child and you show that child love and you then uh, make that child a part of your family. And it's the same with God. Um, when you become a believer, when you become a follower of Christ, uh, you are adopted into his family. You are now a part of his family. And because of that, uh, as you see at the end of verse 15 here, we cry, Abba, Father. And so we've heard before that that uh, uh, simply translates to daddy, right? It's a very uh, intimate um, way to cry out to to uh, to God in a way that we say daddy. And and so when you think about uh, being a parent again, uh, you know, you can relate. Um, you may have kids that, that yell mommy or daddy all day long, right? I know we do. We have, they're, they're constantly doing it. So why do they do that? And it's, it's because they need you. Now, sometimes they just need something or they want something or, you know, they, it's nothing that you would deem important. And it's very annoying at times, parents, right? Uh, and many times it is, and they get on your nerves and things, or it's something silly. But I will say this. There are also times when they call out Daddy, you know, to me because they are afraid um, or because they're sad or because they're hurt uh, or because they're confused about something and need direction and want to know what's going on. Um, or maybe sometimes, you know, they just want to be like you. Um, they want to be by your side. And, you know, that's the part that a lot of times I have to slow down and realize that uh, they're watching me. They're, they're following me. They're looking to me, you know, for guidance and to make good decisions. And that is a huge responsibility we have as parents. And, uh, you know, we, and just like they follow us and they approach us with that calling out daddy or mommy, um, we can approach God, the God of all creation, the same way, in that same manner. Um, verse 16 tells us that, you know, the Spirit will reassure us no matter what we're going through, uh, that we are His. It says, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. In other words, let me reassure you that you are a child of mine, right? And that's what God tells us. And we're talking about reminding ourselves of the gospel every day. Well, that's what we need to remind ourselves. As followers, we have a God that we can approach as our dad, as our daddy, when we, uh, just like a kid, may be afraid or confused or hurt or um, whatever it may be. We can approach our God in that same way uh, as our daddy. And we are, you know, we're his children, and he will always be there for us, just like we as parents should always be there you know, for our children so that they feel comfortable following us and we lead and God leads us. Um, so the, what we take away there is approach him as daddy, right? Approach him as Abba Father and know that he's always there for us. That's what we take away out of those couple of verses. Let's look at uh, this last verse here together before we finish up. Verse 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And so if you think about what an heir is, you know, an heir is that you um, are going to uh, gain something from being 
uh, a child of someone else, right? Uh, maybe you think about an heir as if someone passes away, you inherit something of theirs. Uh, so if we look at it in relation to Christ, we are joint heirs with him. So if you look at the word, if so be that we suffer, it also can be thought of as since, since we suffer with him, we may be also glorified together. So what do we get as heirs of God? So, you know, if you think about what Christ was able to do for us on the cross, uh, he overcame um, all the sin of the world, our sins. And through that act on the cross, he gives us hope. Uh, he gives us a future. He gives us eternal salvation uh, because we believe on that and we believe that he died and rose again and that he has gone up to heaven and that he's coming back one day. Uh, those are all things, those are reassurances that we inherit uh, when we have been adopted into the family uh, of God. As we talked about earlier, being adopted, being a part of God's family comes with this being heirs. Uh, with Christ, and we inherit all these good things from being a part of the family of God. So the third thing that we take away today is, hey, when dad wins, I win, because what dad has done has overcome the world. He's overcome the enemy. When he raised up out of that grave, he defeated everything that we would ever have to worry about, and we should be reassured today that because of that, we should find hope, we should find joy, we should find excitement, and we should remind ourselves of that daily, that no matter what we face, uh, it is nothing in comparison to what Christ faced on the cross. It is nothing in comparison to carrying the weight of the sin of the world on your shoulders, uh, just like he did for us. And so let's be reminded today that we have overcome because our daddy overcome, and that no matter what we feel like um, is coming down on us, it's already been taken care of. and We already have the victory, and we should, we should be encouraged today because of that. We should be, um, we should be, uh, find joy in that today. So I uh, hope you got a little bit of something out of that today. I hope you um, remember that, um, you know, that we, you are a child of God, and that we should be following God, not trying to lead, uh, and that because He wins, and because He has already overcome, we are also overcomers. So I uh, love you guys today. God loves you. Hope you have a great rest of the day with your family. I uh, hope you'll come and join us at Mount Olive tomorrow for service. Um, you know, we, we will be at uh, on campus at Mount Olive. So we'd love to have you there at 11. Um, hope you guys are able to join us and we'll see you soon.